Who's your emergency contact? Who should we notify in the case of death? Welcome to the USP, where I've spent the last two plus decades of my life. We're in bloody Beaumont. I got the bloody Beaumont about 2006, April, May. And it closed down around April, May of 2008. But the reason it closed down was because it got too violent. And these are some of the stories that the things that happened in bloody Beaumont. Around towards the end of 2006 or beginning of 2007, they closed down Marion. Now the reason they closed down Marion, I don't know exactly what caused Marion to be closed down, but I can guess it was a combination of violence, lawsuits, and just chaos. Because Marion back then was a prison that either you go to before you go to ADX or coming from ADX and they put you there to try to transition back into regular population, USP. So you can guess that Marion was for people that couldn't function on the yard as far as the USP, as far as population. You know, right now, Thompson is what Marion used to be. So to get to Marion, you had to almost catch a body, you know? So everybody in Marion is prone to violence, but not just the normal kind of violence, but a little extra, because Everybody in the penitentiary is prone to violence. We do what we have to do when situation comes up, you, you know, whatever it needs to be done because at the end of the day, it's about your survival. So when they closed down Marion, they shipped all these people to different yards and a lot of them, a few of them, end up in Beaumont. But the administration were concerned about the disruption that they were going to cause if they put them on the line. So they put them in F block downstairs, which was an overflow from the, for the shoe. And they held them down there for about a week. And SIS, which is uh, the internal affairs of the prison, you know, uh, secret investigation service or something like that. They went through their evals and stuff and see if these dudes are gonna able to hit the line to see if there was any friction on the line. But you know, back then in Beaumont or throughout the USP, people didn't run to the police and tell them, no, don't let me lie. There's a few, but the majority of the cars of the people there, they don't run to the police and tell them to stop somebody from coming out of the shoe to try to prevent something. Is always, man, if you have a problem with somebody, let them come out and deal with it on yourself, on man time. So when these dudes start coming, when they were about to let these guys out of the shoe, when they started coming out of the shoe, the old flow in F block, rumors went around that, man, they're gonna chop somebody up, two Texas dudes uh, from uh, Texas Syndicate. You know, so one day, Every day, my routine is after chow, after dinner, when I come out, I go to the rec yard, rec three, where it's attached to indoor rec, where they got pool tables and a workout room. No free weight, just cardio stuff. But it's attached to yard three, where they got handball courts, basketball court. You know, that's where I go after dinner, and that's my regular routine. So I'm coming out of the yard, uh, chow, you got to walk through the yard, yard one, where they have the track. As soon as I come out, I'm going to yard, I'm going to go play pool. That's my regular routine. But well, uh, my buddy Castro, he's uh, from Dallas, Mexican dude from Dallas. He tells me, hey, uh, where are you going? Oh, I say, I'm going to go play pool. He goes, man, something's about to pop, pop off over there. I said, all right. So, you know, being me, I've already seen enough. I've already been through shit of my own. I can't 
I have so much crazy shit in my mind, in my head that's stuck in here that I can't erase that I don't want to add any more to it. I've never been a person that wants to be around these things so I can see it and be like, ooh, ah. Uh. If I happen to see something because I was there and couldn't walk away, you know? So I head back to my unit. When I head back to my unit, I tell my celly, Hugh, he's a Chinese dude uh, from China. I think he probably got deported back or is in immigration now or what. But I tell him, hey, Hugh, they say the TS dude's going to butcher somebody. He goes, yeah, I know. I'm going to go watch. I know. I'm going to go watch. Some people like to, you know, to watch those kind of things. I'm not one of them. So I return to my unit. I go get ice. I go get all my stuff just because I know we're going to go on lockdown. When they put the word out, when the, you know, these are serious gangs. Texas Syndicate, Texas MA, Norteños, GDs, for all these in the all these different groups, different gangs, Latin Kings. When they put the word out that somebody's gonna get hit, and usually they only do that when it's one of their own. They give the yard of respect to go ahead and take care of your business or not be around in that area. So I know we're gonna get locked down. So I go get my ice and get whatever I need, you know, to be comfortable during the lockdown. I go and I kick back. I watch TV, waiting for the deuces to go off. The deuces are emergency, pa you know, panic where they let notifying all the COs that there's a situation in, in a certain area. And sure enough, about seven o'clock, the deuces go off and but they don't call recall right away because, you know, however long it takes them for con to contain the situation. But being out in the USP, you can't stay on the yard past 8.30. 8.30 is recall where everybody's got to return back to their assigned housing unit. So when 8.30 comes, my Sally comes back. And this is a story that was relayed to me from my Sally. As soon as they popped the door and let him in my cell and locked it, he's like, oh, man, the guy dead, man. The guy dead. The guy dead. I don't care. I don't care. The guy dead. The guy dead. He goes, two TS that was in Marion had a hit on somebody out here on the yard. Why? For what reason? I don't know. But a hit was put on one of the other TS members that was on the yard in Beaumont. The first day they came out to shoot, they didn't sit around and wait for a week or negotiate or nothing. The first day, the first opportunity they had to hit this dude, as soon as they let him out of the shoe, they went and hit this dude. They said two of them went on the mission to hit this guy. One of them came up behind and wrapped him while the other one stabbed him. And when he stabbed him and got him on the ground, he started stomping on his head until he was unconscious. While he was in unconscious, the other guy is still stabbing him. He's hitting him here. And the, and the dude's unconscious. He's not moving. He's still getting stabbed. And the other guy that's holding him tells him, moving his arm, not nah, hit him over here. So they hit him. Nah. Here, try it over here. Like, they were having fun with it. You know, some people relish in this type of things. And I'm not here to judge them or condemn them or anything because I understand that the environment that we live in, that sometimes you start developing a taste for it. Especially if you have no daylight, especially if you're not going home. And a lot of these gang members in there, they, most of them got decades, if not life sentences. And while they're there, they're catching more cases. So once you get into the system, like I repeat, I always say it over and over again. It don't matter if you got five years, 10 years, 100 years. When you go into the system, 
There's no guarantee that you're going to come back home. You're going to have to either get killed or you end up killing somebody. But if you're a gang member, then you're, num you're on the line. You get a number. When your number is called, you got to go and do what you got to do. And if you don't, you become that victim. So my cell is telling me, like, man, the guy dead. The guy dead, man. I don't care. The guy dead, man. He no move. He don't, he, he don't move no more. He dead. They stab him here. They stab him here. They kick him in the head. He dead. He's not moving. I would like to say that these things are rare, that it happens here and there, but I'm in bloody Beaumont, and this kind of shit happens almost every day. You know, it can be from the smallest thing to you being a rat or you stealing. It doesn't matter because we're in an environment full of miserable individuals, people that ain't never going home. When I get up in Beaumont, they pop the door at, five, at six o'clock. I get up at 5.30. I don't have an alarm. I've already conditioned myself to get up before the doors open. When I get up, I reach under my mattress or my pillow and grab my knife first. I put it on me. Then I put on my shoes. Then I go and brush my teeth and wash my face. And I stand by the door and wait for it to open. Because I told you when I was in Victorville, at six o'clock in the morning, somebody ran in my cell with a knife. But that was a lesson I learned. And I'm good at learning lessons. And I was never going to allow that to happen anymore. But I'm not out in the yard disrespecting anybody or being reckless. But I don't can control me, my actions. I don't know if I did something to offend somebody the night before because I looked at, because they perceived that I looked them the wrong way or said something or whatever. You have no idea what's going on in everybody else's head, only your own. So the only thing you, got, you can do, the only thing I can do is to ensure myself that at all times when the door is open to protect myself. Because I promise you, if that guy that got butchered knew that he was about to get butchered, he's a gangster too now. He might have went and butchered somebody and got them before they got him. But he didn't know. He was clueless, a sitting duck, because he could only know what's in his mind. He, don't, he can't think and perceive what everybody else is thinking. And he had no clue that these two individuals he just let out of Marion came on a, to the yard with a mission and he was the mission. I don't know if he survived or not, but according to my celly, the guy dead, man. The guy dead. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please share this. Please subscribe. I'm so grateful for all your support. Thank you. Welcome to the USP.